Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sterling and lately I've had a few requests from some of you on how to do the tapestry crochet method. So in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down how to create this jack-o'-lantern square. I'm making a whole bunch of these different Halloween themed squares for a cardigan in our next Spooky Saturday series. So if you're interested in joining me every Saturday until Halloween, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of all of the videos in this series. All right, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to create this really simple pumpkin square with tapestry crochet. And as you can see, the front is nice and smooth and so is the back, except for you can see these lines here, these black lines which is when I turned my work and carried that black yarn while working over it. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. I'm using the Red Heart Super Saver in the color pumpkin. And it says to use a 5.5 millimeter hook, but I find that with tapestry crochet, I like to size down a hook size because it keeps the stitches tighter and just neater. So I like sizing down and I'm gonna use a size four millimeter hook. And if you want to crochet along with me, you can find the crochet pattern for this square as well as the tapestry crochet chart on my blog, which is linked in the description box below. So when you look at a tapestry chart and you see those numbers at the bottom and the sides, the numbers at the bottom are the stitches and the numbers on the sides are the rows. So we can see that the grid is 20 by 20. So it's 20 stitches by 20 rows. And you can also see that some of the numbers are on the right side of the grid and some of the numbers are on the left side of the grid. So whichever side the number is on, is the direction that you're going to be reading the chart from. So you can see one is on the right side, so you're gonna start reading the chart from right to left, and then two is on the left side of the grid. So you're gonna read the chart from the left side to the right. And to work my square, I'm gonna be using single crochet stitches. And so since single crochet typically has one turning chain, we're going to work 20 chains plus one turning chain. So we're gonna work 21 chains to begin. So I'm gonna chain 21. So I've got 21 chains. Now I'm going to work this first row, reading my chart from right to left. So as you can see, all of the squares in that first row are orange. So I'm going to continue with my orange color. And in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to work a single crochet. And I'm going to continue working one single crochet in each chain all the way across the row. All right, so now I have 20 single crochet. And for the second row, I'm going to read my chart from left to right. So for that second row as well, they're all orange squares. So I'm going to chain one for my turning chain, turn my work over. Now I'm at the back of my piece. And I'm going to work one single crochet back across the row in each stitch. So I'm gonna work 20 single crochet, all still with that same orange color yarn. All right, so for that second row, I've got my 20 single crochet stitches, all with that orange color. All right, so now for this third row, 
which I'm reading from right to left because that number three is on the right side of the grid. All of the squares are orange, but because in the fourth row, I'm going to start using the second color, which is black, I'm going to start carrying the black yarn in this row. So I'm gonna take my black yarn here and in order to add it to our work, set up the third row, so chain one, turn my work, and now I'm going to take that black yarn, so I'm going to bring it so that the tail is facing down and is to the right of my piece because I'm working from right to left. And I'm just going to put my hook back into that loop. And I'm going to, with my left hand, my non-dominant hand, I'm gonna hold that black yarn to the back of the piece. And now as I work that first stitch, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert my hook in that first stitch, and I'm gonna bring my hook underneath that black yarn like so. So I'll show you again. I'm taking my hook, bringing it into that first stitch and bringing it underneath that black yarn. And then I'm going to work my single crochet. So I'm going to yarn over with the orange yarn, pull it through and it's being wrapped around the black yarn at this point. And then I'm going to take my hook back over that black yarn, yarn over and pull through, finishing that single crochet. And as you can see, this is the way the back of the piece looks. And I'm just going to pull that tail in a bit so that it's nice and taut. All right, and now I'm going to move on to the next stitch. So I'm going to put my hook into that next stitch, bring it underneath that black yarn, yarn over with the orange, pull through. Now I have two loops on my hook, then yarn over with the orange and pull through both loops. Working that second single crochet. And I'm just gonna continue repeating those steps all the way across my row, making sure that I am carrying that black yarn with each stitch. So I'm working, I'm putting that hook underneath that black yarn, yarning over with the orange, pull through. Now I have two loops, yarn over and pull through both loops. So you can see I'm carrying it along the back side of my piece. And as you work your stitches, you wanna make sure that that black yarn is nice and taut, not too tight, but pretty taut because that's what keeps the back of the stitches nice and neat. So let's continue working across the row with that orange yarn, carrying that black yarn all the way across. And as you can see, you can barely see that orange yarn being carried inside of the stitches. And it also makes the fabric denser, which is why I like the tapestry crochet stitch. I'm going to be using this square to make a cardigan. So I like using the tapestry crochet for this because the square will be a bit more dense. Okay, so now I'm in that last stitch. So I'm going to work that single crochet around that black yarn. And as you can see, this is row three with that black yarn carried all the way across the row. This is the back of the work. And what I'll like to do at this point is just pull that black yarn a bit, not too tight, because as you can see, if you pull it too tight, it'll start to bunch like that at the other end of our piece, which is not what we want. So I'm just gonna pull it back this way, keep those stitches taut, but not too tight. Still a bit more on the relaxed side, but just removing any slack that's in between the stitches so that it's nice and neat. Okay, so now for the row four, we're reading our chart from left to right. 
So we are going to be working the first six stitches with our orange yarn. So we're gonna chain one. So for row four, we're gonna chain one, turn over. And now for the, those first six stitches, we're going to be working with the orange yarn. So what I like to do when I'm turning my work while carrying the color of yarn is this is the front of the piece and when I turn I'm working from left to right with this fourth row so this is going to be the wrong side of the piece and it does require a bit of crowd control when you start to change colors of yarn so I'm going to just show you some of my favorite ways to make sure that it doesn't get too tangled and confusing so what I like to do is take this black yarn and I'm just going to place it on top of the back of the piece here like this, holding this black yarn towards the back of the piece, which is the part that's facing us now. So I'm gonna take my hook, insert it into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, and yarn over, and work that single crochet. And as you can see, it creates like a little loop here and it's tucking it in the back of the piece so that your loops will be facing the back like this. All right, so now I'm going to move to the next stitch. So insert my hook into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, work my single crochet. Now I'm at the third stitch work a single crochet, fourth stitch, work a single crochet, fifth stitch, and now I'm at the sixth stitch. So what I'm gonna do is insert my hook, yarn over, pull through, now I have two loops on my hook, and I'm going to change colors to the black yarn because for the next two stitches, I'm working two single crochet with the black yarn. So what I'm gonna do is now make sure that my, my yarns here are not too twisted here. So I'm gonna take that orange yarn, bring it to the back of the piece here, crossing it underneath that black yarn so that it's not twisted. And then I'm going to yarn over, pull through with the black yarn here. Now I'm ready to work my next single crochet with the black yarn. And I'm going to pull on that orange yarn just a little bit to make sure that that stitch is nice and taut. And it takes a little bit of practice making your stitches nice and neat, um, but these are just some tips that I like to use to keep it neat. But it does take a bit of practice. So I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch Yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through both loops with that black yarn. Work the next stitch with the black yarn, yarn over, pull through. Now I have two loops. And because now for the next four stitches, I'm gonna be working with the orange yarn, I'm going to take that black yarn, pull it to the back of the piece, take that orange yarn, And now I'm going to pull through with the orange yarn, keeping that black yarn towards the back of the piece here and yarn over, pull through with the orange yarn here. Pull that slack with the black yarn. And now I'm gonna work the next four stitches with the orange. So one, two, three, and now for this fourth stitch, I'm gonna begin it with the orange. And now I'm going to change colors. So take that orange yarn, bring it to the back of the piece. Take that black yarn, cross it underneath the orange yarn so that I don't get them tangled. And then yarn over 
and pull through with that black yarn. Now I'm going to work the next two stitches with the black yarn, so one, and then I'm going to start the second one with the black, bring that black yarn back towards the back of the piece, yarn over and pull through with the orange yarn. Now for the rest of the stitches in this row, I'm going to work the single crochets in each stitch with the orange yarn. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And there we go. This is what it looks like so far. So now for the fifth row, we're going to be reading from right to left. So we're going to chain one with the orange, turn our work. I'm going to take that black yarn and carry it towards the back of the piece still. And now since the front is facing us, we're going to carry the black yarn to the back here. So insert our hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through. Working that first single crochet with the orange. And we're going to do that for the next four stitches. One, two, three, and start it off with the orange. And before I start working with that black yarn, I'm going to actually see I have a bit of slack here with the black yarn. So I'm just going to pull on it a bit. Not too tight, but just pull it a bit. And now I'm going to, as you can see here, that orange yarn is on top of the black yarn here. So I'm going to bring that orange yarn over the black yarn so that it doesn't get tangled. So it looks like that on the back of my piece. So crossing that orange yarn over the black yarn and I'm going to yarn over and pull through with the black yarn. So a lot of tapestry crochet and really any color work with crochet is sort of keeping the colors organized so that you don't have to untangle a bunch of yarn, which isn't very fun. Okay, so now for this next stitch, I'm gonna work a single crochet with the black yarn for one, two, and now I'm gonna start this third one with the black yarn, yarn over, pull through, and now I'm going to yarn over, pull through both loops with that orange yarn, switching back to orange. Now I'm going to work the next four stitches with orange, making sure to carry my yarn to the back of the piece. One, two, three, start it off with the orange four, and then switch to black. So bring that orange yarn over the black yarn, pulling any slack, and then yarn over and finish that stitch with the black yarn. Now work the next three stitches with black. One, two, and three. Start it off with black, and then bring the orange back in by yarning over and pull through with the orange and pull that black yarn a bit to remove any slack. Now work the last five stitches with orange. So one, two, three, four, and five. And there you go. All right, now we are at the sixth row. So I'm going to read it from left to right this time. So I'm gonna chain one, turn my work, and because the back of our work is facing us this time, I'm going to take that black yarn and carry it on the back which is facing us. So I'm going to carry it on this side facing me and take my hook and insert it into the first stitch, 
yarn over with that orange yarn and pull through carrying that black yarn to the back of the piece yarn over pull through both loops working that first single crochet stitch now I'm going to work three more stitches with orange one two and three but now here I'm going to switch to black so bring that orange yarn to the back of the piece and I'm across it over the black so I don't accidentally tangle the colors and yarn over and pull through with black finishing that stitch pull any slack of that the orange yarn has and now carry that orange yarn to the back of the piece I'm going to work the next 12 stitches with black so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and for this 12th stitch I'm going to start it off with the with the black so insert my hook yarn over pull through and then finish it off with orange so bring that black to the back of the piece grab my orange yarn over and pull through both loops finishing it out with the orange pull any slack that I have with that black yarn and then carry it to the back of the piece and finish out this row with four stitches with orange one two three and four and that's the sixth row so continue working from rows seven to seventeen in the same way working those odd rows from right to left and working the even rows from left to right and if you want to check out the tapestry crochet chart as well as the written instructions you can head to the blog and check that out the link for that is in the description box below and work rows 7 through 17 and then join back up with me for rows 18 to 20 and I'll show you how to finish it off all right so now I'm at row 18 and for this row we're reading it from left to right and all of the and all of the stitches are orange but in order to match up with the beginning of our piece we're going to carry the black yarn to the back of the piece just for this one last row so i'm going to chain one turn my work take that black yarn and carry it to the back of the piece which is facing towards me now and now i'm going to simply work all of the stitches with the orange yarn carrying that black yarn towards the back of the piece all right now I'm going to trim that in for the black yarn leave a little tail towards the side of the piece and then these next two rows are just with the orange yarn so I'm going to chain one turn my work and then simply work one single crochet for each of the stitches for these next two rows all right so now we'll just trim that orange yarn off tie it off and weave in the ends and for this square I'm just going to weave the ends through the middle of the stitches on the back of the piece and I just love weaving in the ends with these tapestry crochet stitches because since the fabric is so dense it's really easy to hide the ends and now we have our jack-o-lantern square these are so fun and easy and pretty quick to do once you understand how the technique works this one measures about 
four and three quarters by four and three quarters inches. And these jack-o'-lantern squares are going to be perfect for our cardigan. If you haven't voted in what color palette you'd like to see for that, definitely check out my community board where I have a poll. Definitely vote on whether you'd like to see it with oranges and blacks and more classic Halloween colors or purple and green. Or if you'd like to see some kind of combination of the two, that poll is on my community board. So definitely check that out. And also definitely don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe and join me each Saturday for the next few Saturdays until Halloween for a spooky video on Saturdays. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me in the next one.